What's up, guys? Uh, brand new show under the Fight Bananas banner. I'm Dave Van Auken. The red light is on. Guys, this is called Benton Bananas. We're going to do a new thing here. 15, 17 minutes all about betting. A uh, preview of this weekend's UFC, UFC Vegas 51. But we're going to do more shows. We're going to do more stuff on UFC Fat, uh, Fight Pass, maybe an LFA show, FAC, maybe an icon show. We'll get into it. But today, I got two guests with me. First guest, if you've seen him multiple times underneath the banner, I call him the future. He does all things MMA media, got BZ Money, the post-fight show here for Fight Fanatics, Rooted MMA, uh, one of my good guys right here. Let's uh, kind of introduce Josh Byers first. Josh! What's up, Dave? What's up, dude? How are you? Not much. I'm pretty good. You know, I'm ready to talk about this, this card. Gambling is becoming huge. It has been huge. So it just makes sense to, to lay the bets and win some people money, I feel like. I, that's all I'm trying to do, man. I'm like Robin Hood. I'm just trying to give people, you know, the, the money. Um, but if you're a peanut butter, I'm definitely going to bring on Jelly. Uh, I talked to her a couple weeks ago. I'm just, I'm like her biggest fan now. I'm like telling everyone in the world, uh, you got to just listen to the ruthless one. 4-0 as a professional fighter. I think she has a fight in May coming up soon. Uh, I'm telling you guys, she is an absolute gem. Talking about the ruthless L Wagman. What's up, L? Hey guys, what's going on, Dave? How are you? Not much. How are you? Doing really well. <laughs> <We're> here. <laughs> we, we know stuff offside the camera. L, you're doing good. You're 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 hopefully you're doing okay. <laughs> what a savage. What a savage. All right, we'll get into it. We talked about it off air. Really fun, really quick, really easy, really down to uh, you know the brass roots. We're gonna have our best bet on the board. Whatever your best fight it can be an underdog could be a huge favorite could be an under anything you want your best call of this card then we'll get an underdog play we got to pick an underdog you know hopefully we can hit one of those now and then and then a three fight parlay i love doing those it's just fun usually put 10 20 bucks on it try to win something big but we'll do that we'll start like i said best bet on the board we'll start with ladies first l what's your absolute best bet on this card ufc vegas 51 my best bet on the board is actually a very big favorite. I think Dracar close yeah. is just a lock to annihilate Brandon Jenkins uh, this week. I just I think yep. his his wins. Uh, he's got a, he had a fantastic performance over Groovy Lando, who's amazing. Like I just I can't see how how Brandon gets it done. I think that Dracar has the power, has the striking everywhere. I I concur with that. The only thing I would say to kind of throw out there to be the uh, devil's advocate, you know, now he's up to like a minus 800. He's becoming, like you said, the Ooh. biggest favorite on the <laughs> card. Do, is there a way to touch him or is it is he a better way to kind of sneak into your three fight parlay maybe later on? But is it like uh, it, it's hard to lay eight to one, right? Oh, that's yeah. Last time I looked, I think he was like 500. And that's yeah, it, I, I assumed it would go up, but. Yeah, he's. I feel like he's not going to be a good straight bet for that. Like he's a good, a good lock for a parlay. Absolutely. Okay, I like that. Josh, what is your absolute best bet on this card? UFC Vegas fifty one. Absolute best bet. It's at the top of the card. It's Vicente Luque. He already beat Bilal Muhammad. I think the line is just like two in favor of Bilal. He's too small of an underdog in my opinion. He okay. beats everyone. He's a violent finisher. He's just nasty with. On the feet and then on the ground, he got a sub against Kiesa, and that's impressive to do against Kiesa, even though he's been subbed a couple times. But I've been a big fan of Luque for a long time. After that Kiesa fight, we talked about him as title challenger. He's right yep. there, so I think he wants to come out and hopefully make a statement, and then he's on that short list behind, you know, we want to see Hamzat, Leon Edwards next. But then I think Vicente Luque is really the guy we should be looking at for to challenge Kamaru Usman, I think. so. I'm super impressed with him. I think he beats Bilal and beats him again. Josh, who is that guy, Hazmat, that you're talking about? I never heard of him. Who is that? He's he's Boers. I mean, he's yeah. just yeah. – He's pretty he's good. Not, I don't know how to describe him anymore. He's no. just kind of – Very average. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. No. That's Hazmat Chemayev, 11-0 and 0 now. Uh, absolutely the biggest star from last weekend's UFC 273. Let me throw out a little nugget. Uh, I'm a big – Vicente Luque guy myself, Josh. That's a really good call on you. The third best finisher in the UFC, minimum 10 fights, Charles Oliveira. You guys maybe know him. He's the uh, lightweight champion of the world. The number one finisher in all the UFC, minimum 10 fights, Francis Nagano, the heavyweight champion. So number one is Francis. Number three is Charles Oliveira. Guess who is number two? Vicente Luque. Like no one talks about how this man finishes fights. 
stand up, uh, you know, elbows, submission game, ground game. I love that he's a finisher of fights. That's a real good call. I like Luke a lot. How about you, Al? You like Luke a lot as well? I I actually think I might take Bilal on this. Okay. I okay. um I know he got caught. He got caught early in the first fight. Yep. And the 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 thing about the thing about Luke is he is dangerous everywhere. Absolutely. Yeah. Knees, elbows, the clench, he's nasty. He's dangerous in the kicking range. He's dangerous on the ground. Uh Grant actually called his Dars finish uh in that in <laughs> over uh Kiesa, which was fantastic. Like, and, and subbing a guy like Kiesa as well just speaks to his grappling abilities. Right, so right. he is absolutely incredibly dangerous. Bilal has a very different grappling style from Kiesa. He smothers. His top pressure is fantastic. And the way he has been running through, like we're talking about the way Vicente Luque is running through people. We have to talk about the way that Bilal is dominating people as well. Just absolutely mauled Wonder Boy. Like you have to, you have to give him the same credit because they're both, they're both right here. Yep. And in that title contention conversation, and if you're if we're going to talk about Vicente's dom like dominance over the last few fights, we have to look at Bilal's as well because those guys are right there. And before we transition to the best underdog play, and I love that it's kind of one of my favorites of being an MMA fan. I love picking underdogs. What where do you guys where do you guys at? Of this is a rematch. You know, Bilal and Vicente fought before. This is an absolute rematch. With as as high as Luke has been in the last three four years, just running through people, some really really key high moments. Bilal is like you know it's just like the the people's main event and the main event. He's got the show under Anik and Florian the podcast. Like he's got all this positive mojo going. Who do you think is kind of like uh, taking his game to the next level in the last three four years? Do you think it is Bilal, and you think he's absolute better where he was, or you think Luke is on another level? Josh, let's start with you on that. Yeah, I think with Bilal, he has been on a better run and yep. i think that luke's been in more wars he's had more like tough really close fights grounded out wh whereas Bilal is just kind of beating people soundly until he ran into leon edwards and the way that ended was he was doing well against leon edwards but the head kick we saw it that i feel like the tide was turning once leon landed that head kick so i'm, I'm more impressed with the run that Bilal has been on because I think it was more unexpected. I think the way Luke fights in his fan friendly style, we kind of expected him to be here. And this is just like, it's a perfect rematch uh, for the rankings. And so whoever wins this fight deserves to be talked about. I know Bilal wants to be champion and Luke wants to be champion, but he won't fight Gilbert Burns. So yeah. I don't know. Crazy. All right, let's go with it. It's uh, I'm telling you guys, as being an MMA fan and betting on MMA, there's nothing like hitting an underdog. Your whole Saturday night is good. Doesn't matter about the rest of the fights, the pizza, the wings, the beer. If you nail your underdog, life is good. Elvis, start with you. What's your best underdog play for UFC Vegas 51? Man, I, I, I have been back and forth on this, but I, I really I think I'm gonna take I'm gonna take Bilal. Bilal's okay. gonna be my underdog. Okay. I know I know uh, Gilbert Gilbert didn't. Uh, didn't come through for me last week, but um, he was he was uh, so he was close. starting great to turn fight. the tides in so the second. Close. Though it was man, that was a great fight. But I, I think I'm going to take Bilal. I think okay. I think that the, the heavy wrestling, the heavy pressure. I think he's going to get it done. All right, that sounds good, Josh. How about you? Which a uh, big underdog play for Saturday night? Yeah, I mean, I looked through the card, and we've seen a guy in this spot before, plus one fifty range. And he, he can get it done. He definitely has power. He's dangerous for 15 minutes. And the guy I'm talking about is William Knight. And I think against, um, was it Devin? He, he has the... Yeah, Devin Clark. Devin Clark, yeah. He's got the chance to finish him. I think he's he will be dangerous yeah. all 15 minutes. They're both on like a... He dropped his last one to Maxine Grishin. William Knight did. But I think he learned a lot from that fight. Because Devin Clark is going to be a longer, taller guy. But I think he could get inside and... And really land his power as Maxine is just too good at keeping him on the outside. I don't know if Devin Clark is as good as, as doing what Maxine did to uh, William Knight. So I like him as plus 150 underdog. I really do. I like that as well, too. A lot. I like I like betting on underdogs that literally one punch. That's all he needs, right? William Knight needs one overhand right. Knight's over. Literally pun, uh, you know, attended there. So that's all you need. Plus 150, one right hand. I'm kind of with that, too. I like that underdog play. So we got Bilal in that range of 150, William Knight 150. L, do you like that William Knight play as well, or you, uh, you like the favorite in that? I uh, I think I'm going to take Clark in that fight. Okay. I, uh, Will, William Knight, I don't think he he has the the gas tank to deal, yeah. to be able yeah. to put the pressure on Clark. Clark has great range control, and he is a lot longer than Knight. 
and uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I got hit in the head real hard today. Who uh, can, does anybody remember off the top of the head? Uh, Clark's last fight. Uh, I actually don't. I'm usually pretty damn good at this. I was just looking at it, man. Um, but he's, I think he's seen much tougher competition in, right. in, obviously in the UFC, night is much newer, but, uh, oh, Devin Clark beat, uh, handled Alonzo Menafield, who I feel like is just a bigger, yeah, very comparable, better very version comparable. of William yeah. Knight, maybe a little yeah, less wrestling, call. but definitely has the power and a longer range. And I, I think that, I think it's going to be a very similar fight, uh, to the Alonzo Menafield and the Devin Clark fight. L, that makes so much sense. That means I'm going with William Knight and the underdog. That's MMA for you. That's MMA. <laughs> Everything makes sense. You go left. All right. One of my favorites as well, too. We love doing a little three-fight parlay. It's somewhere that you can just kind of have fun. You can, like I said, put 10 or 20 bucks on. Usually you throw an underdog in there. You get a favorite and someone real close, and then you can really make money. You can make two, three, four hundred bucks on a $10, $20 bet. Josh, let's start with you, my friend. What kind of three-fight parlay? I got an app up open right now. I kind of will compute it. I'll put okay. the numbers in, and we'll kind of run with it. What's a three-fight parlay that you like? So I usually am not a prop bet guy, but I think this one, my first leg, is going to be uh, fight does not go the distance. Drakkar Close, Brandon Jenkins, they've been talking a little bit back and forth on social media. They've been kind of you know, beefing with each other. Drakkar's called him out. So I think the bad blood is there. I like the finishing ability of Drakkar Close. We've seen him be finished too, so he'll go for it. And three years layoff, like Dave said earlier, he's going to come in and try to make a splash like he did with the KC. He also is a decision fighter, so it's kind of scary, but straight up not having that. Uh, I like the fight does not go the distance. The second leg, I like Martin Boudet versus Chris Barnett. We all love Chris Barnett. He's an entertaining fighter. If he wins, it's going to be a really exciting moment. But I think Boudet, after the Contender Series fight, he's just got he's got kicks. He's got everything. He's very technical once he gets inside. So I like that play. And then my final one is going to be Vicente Luque. I'm just I'm very confident in that uh, main event. I think that he's just he's just ahead of Bilal Muhammad in different in a lot of different areas, especially on the feet. I think, and I think he's going to take advantage of that. So I really like that three-fight parlay. I think, I don't know, David, it was like plus 250, I think, when I checked on it. But three picks that I can be confident in and put my money on, I would say. I like that. I just kind of put the numbers in. We're at plus 334, my man. We're getting a little bit of money on that, a little skinny. Uh, like you said, if you're into the Luque and close Boudet, uh, I'm a Chris Beast boy Barnett guy. Come on, how can you not love the the, the bear? You know what I oh, mean. Yeah. So that's a it's a very unpopular three fight parlay, but you probably will win. I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> I hope so. There we go. So plus three thirty four for uh, Josh Byers. All right, I'll take it away. So uh, I uh, I saw uh, Boudet's actually been in a lot of the parlays that I've kind of been looking at. I uh, I like that play as well. Um, but I'm actually uh, I've been looking at Panny Kanzad has been uh, a fight that I've been looking at. I think Lena Landsberg is just, uh, I think she's towards the end of her career. The age difference is huge. Panny's wrestling and ability to close the distance and put the pressure on. I just can't see Lena getting the uh, the range to be able to um, work her Muay Thai and get the, get the striking exchanges uh, in that fight. So I'm going to take Panny for uh, my first leg. And then I'm also taking the over in the Estela Nunez Sam Hughes fight, which I think that Nunez will take that as well. Um, but I'm taking the over in that. I think uh, her in and out, her striking angles will be too much for Sam Hughes, especially after uh, we saw the displays from like Tisha Torres as well and uh, Loma Lukmumbe, who also has a very heavy Muay Thai style, similar striking to Estela. Um, I think Sam will struggle to get, get her wrestling and her grappling going. Um, and, uh, I'm going to take Bilal for my, for my third piece. I'm going to, I'm going to keep, keep going on these main event underdogs, man. I, I, one's going to pull through for me. Yeah, you're right. You're over two and a half on the second fight. Yes. I like that a lot. So Penny, we got over with Sam Hughes. I think that's a guarantee to be over. I don't know. It's just I one agree. of those fights. I think it's back and forth for 15 minutes. It's overwritten all over it. And then you got money written. You got Bilal Muhammad all night long, every up and down, best bet, underdog. I like it. So that's right now, guys. That parlay is at plus 310. So I like that as well. So we got a plus 310. We got a plus 334. I'm with it. I like that. So uh, it's really funny. We didn't plan it this way, but it's a very Vicente Luque is that way. 
or that way, right? Yeah, that <laughs> way. And then this way is Bilal Muhammad. I like that. We uh we have a little friendly wager here on the first ever bed and bananas. One of us is losing now. I know, I know. It's gonna be sad. I really like your other two pieces. So <laughs> yeah, it's, they're good. They're really good. It's one of those cards, guys. UFC Vegas, uh, I mean, UFC 273 was last weekend. I think this card was like overlooked. I really like the main event, but when you start kind of dissecting it and going between, there's a lot of really cool fights. Three female fights are on it. A good heavyweight main event. A couple little sleepers. Telling you guys, the fight of the night is Miguel Bieza versus uh, Andre Filiho. That fight's going to be so freaking good. I guarantee it. Fight of the night. Throw money on that. Uh, but I think we did it for uh, L Wagman, the ruthless one. Josh Byers, I'm Dave Van Ock, and that's the first ever Ben and Bananas. We did it. There we go. Ooh. All right, guys. Talk to you guys later. Thanks, man.